Hey yogis, welcome to today's tutorial. Back it up. <laughs> Today, well this week we're actually looking at uh, yoga for anxiety and different tools that we can use to help uh, alleviate those symptom of, symptoms of anxiety, which can be super overwhelming for a lot of us. Uh, I personally suffered anxiety and depression for seven years, longer in fact, but uh, it wasn't until that period of seven years that it was diagnosed. But uh, I would say based on my symptoms, I probably had that since I was a teenager. Uh, so pretty much lived my whole life with it. And this stuff right here on the wrong rectangle is what changed everything for me. Uh, and it wasn't just the asana practice that we do here. This was like the, the, the road or the, the door that I opened to find those answers and those tools. Uh, but this is what I cover uh, in a lot of my trainings and you know, certainly in my transformational program is how to give you those tools to find your way back to self-love so that you have those for all of your life and you no longer have to live with uh, that really debilitating anxiety and depression that uh, many of us have experienced. And even if this is if that's something that you don't have to live with, this asana practice is still going to be a beautiful welcoming practice for you. So I have two very naughty dogs today who, if you've seen my Instagram posts, completely shredded the outside. It was like they were on puppy crap when I left the house. Like they smoked all the, well like actually ate all the dried dog biscuits and then it was raining outside so they couldn't go outside. So now they're in Zealand over there. <laughs> I don't think that they'll wake up for another couple of hours. They must have been exhausted, busy little creatures. Anyway, let's get started in this little flow. And we're gonna to come to child's pose first off. So sitting in hero's pose, I'm a little bit active on the inside of the thighs here, belly to spine, and I'm sinking my hips down to my heels. And I'm just really gonna roll my body over the top of my thighs and bring my forehead to the mat. My hands are reaching back past my heels and that's allowing my shoulders to open up, create a little bit of breadth between the scapula and come into a super relaxed state. So while you're here in child's pose and I'm doing like little odd things with my head, you guys just stay with your head, forehead down on the mat while I talk to you sideways. Uh, this variation of child's pose is just allowing me to open up through the spine and feel the opening breadth across my shoulders, as well as feeling the compression of the belly into the thighs. So each time you feel that inhale breath, you're feeling all encompassed and like in that small little space where it's just you and your breath. This is a beautiful thing about child's pose, which is actually an inversion because your head is below your heart, which is below your hips. So one of the easiest inversions that we have to play within our practice. So as you're here in child's pose, I want you to feel like you have a physical expansion of the back body with the inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to feel like you're having a deep surrender into that space. So the inhale is feeling the expansion through the body and the exhale is allowing you to surrender into that space. And when you're in child's pose, it doesn't matter how long you stay here. You can stay for as little or as long as you like. It's a really beautiful space to come to. Um, if you have anxiety at work and you're hiding under your desk, you're in child's pose. I totally support that. <laughs> anyway, coming back to child's pose, here we go. Resting the forehead onto the earth and just breathing into the back body. Take one more round of breath here and we're going to slowly on your next inhale, roll through the back body. Take the arms up and over the head as you continue the next inhale. And as you exhale, bring the hands through heart centre. And we're just going to stay here for three rounds of breath. And with each round of breath, I want you to think of something that you are grateful for. And as you inhale the breath, have that thought or that image of something that you're grateful for. I'm very grateful for that sleeping dog right now. Sleeping. And as you exhale, send that loving kindness for that sleeping dog out into the universe. I want you to think of two more things for which you are grateful for today. 
This practice of gratitude brings us into the present moment and allows us to find just that spark of joy when things can be a little bit bleak or challenging. Thinking of your third thing, exhaling that out into the world. Releasing the hands down to the side body when you've exhaled that breath. Take an inhale, reach up and over with the right arm. Pressing or sending the right hip down into the right heel and really feeling the opening all the way from the elbow down into the hip in that side body. Take another round of breath here. Exhale and release to the other side. Inhale, left up and over, stretching from the elbow to the hip all the way down that left side of the body. You can really lean into that right hand and feel the, right, the left hip rather pressing down into the left heel. Connecting with the breath always. So the inhale finds you a little length and the exhale allows that hip to sink a little bit lower, deepening that stretch with each breath. On the inhale, come back up to center. Release the breath. And just stay here for another round of breath. Sometimes if you get stuck with the breath, it's really helpful to use counting. So inhale, you can reach the arms up over the head with me for four, three, two, and one. As you exhale, bring the hands through heart center. Give the wrists, wrists a little press. Open the palms. This one's going to need your concentration and bring the hands back to heart center. So count the inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale the breath nice and slowly. Try and match the breath to this action. So it might even be a little bit longer than the four counts. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, four, three, two, and one, let's count the exhales. Four, three, two, one, zero, minus one, minus two. It's <laughs> my expert counting for this morning. <laughs> Last round here. Inhale, reach the arms up over the head. Four counts. Exhale, bring that through the heart center. Give your wrists a little bit of a stretch in this space. Lengthen through the arms and then bring the hands back to heart center. Let's find our tabletop pose. So this shape is another great one for anxiety, really connecting you into the breath. So press the hands, palms into the earth, shins into the earth. You're gonna take an inhale, and again, using the counting method if you like, gazing towards the sky, and exhale, roll through the back body. So connecting the breath to numbers, is a really helpful way to bring your attention into the present moment. Because amazingly enough, our busy brains cannot think of two things at once. Exhale, roll through the back body. One more round. Inhale the breath. Drop the belly down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, roll through the back body. Tuck the chin into the chest and come back to that neutral space. Reaching your left leg behind, really press those toes into the mat, ground and connect the hands into the earth. Almost like you can feel the toes trying to escape here. Activate the core, because next up, we're going to pull this knee into the chest as we lift up into the hands. For four, three, two, and one. Exhale, release that down and lift that left leg off the earth. We're going to take some hip circles here for a bit of hip mobility. This takes some focus. So we're going to sweep that foot up and around, bringing it back down to the floor. Do two more, up and around. You might find you've shifted a weight a little bit over to the right and that's perfectly okay. And then take one more. This time, as you come down, sweep that foot behind that left or right supporting foot, plant the hand and reach up into this variation of side plank. Really stretch tall, separating the shoulders. And as you take your next inhale breath, reach that left arm up and over for a full body side stretch. 
We need to gaze towards the fingertips, opening into the heart space just a little. Exhale and release back to your tabletop. And we're going to take our right leg straight behind us. Again, feeling the opening of the foot as you're pressing the toes into the mat. Honestly, I feel like this feels so good. <laughs> it's like a little toe massage at home. I was planning some reflexology today. <laughs> so plant the hands underneath the shoulders, start to engage into the belly. And we're going to lift that right leg up to the side and find that mobility in creating circles. And my bolster is in the perfect spot here and my wall. Probably could have shifted a little bit left, but we'll just make some adjustments. One more. And then we're going to swing that right leg behind the left and open up for this variation of side plank. Reach high with your next inhale breath. Exhale the breath, and as you inhale again, reach forward as far, far as you can, all the way from the fingertips down to this foot, feeling that full side body stretch. Coming back to centre, because you'd like to think that I forgot that lift, but I did not, maybe. Press the hands into the earth, and bring the left knee into the belly. Finding that core strength. Exhale and release. Bring both knees back together. Another two rounds of cat cow. Inhale, belly down. Exhale, roll through the back body. Inhale, belly goes down. The next shape that we're going to take is Ashtanga Namaskar. Exhale, roll through the back body. Ashtanga Namaskar is from our Hatha yoga practice. We're going to bring our hands ever so slightly forward and we're going to drop our chin and our chest. So you can see that my hands are just underneath my shoulders here. We've got a little bit of heart opening happening, opening into the throat. And we're just going to stay here for two breaths to walk the knees a little closer if you feel you'd like a little more opening through the heart space. One more round of breath. Inhale and exhale. Press the hands into the mat, tuck the toes, send the hips back and we're going to lift up to downward facing dog. We're going to take three rounds of breath here. So our downward facing dog is another inversion. Head below the heart, below the hips. So if you suffer from anxiety, another great space to come. Just find your downward facing dog, a little bit of movement, and just breathe into the space. So we're going to do some lift, roll, bend, and send. And that involves lifting the heels up, bending the knees and bringing the belly down to the thighs. And pressing the heels down to the earth. And before we do that, we're going to come into plank. So slide the body forward. And now we're going to bend those knees, belly to thighs, lift the hips and send the heels back down to the earth. So lifting up onto the toes and rolling all the way forward into your plank, sending the hips back as the belly come to the knees, heels down to the earth, drop the head. Last round here, lift up onto the toes, rolling forward into your plank. Sending the hips back, belly to thighs, press and lift. I know I said that was the last one, but let's do one more. Lift up onto the toes, roll through the back body into your plank pose. Bend the knees, belly to thighs, heels to the earth. Stay here for a moment in downward facing dog. If you need a little movement here, don't be afraid to do that. Gentle gaze to the hands. We're just going to walk our hands back to our feet. So that requires a little bit of concentration because normally we take our feet to our hands, yeah? Bend into the knees, allow the belly to rest on the thighs. This postural shape is called ragdoll. And you know that I'm gonna tell you it's another inversion. <laughs> also fantastic, super fantastic for your anxiety or any kind of stress relief. 
even if you just feel a little sense of overwhelm, you can grab hold of each elbow and drop the head down. Now, I'm keeping this belly to thigh connection in here, allowing my head to release, so no tension in the neck or shoulders. Opposite elbows, and I'm drawing the head towards the earth. You can take a gentle sway here. It always feels good. And we're going to release the hands down to the earth. Roll up through the back body as you inhale. Take the arms up and overhead. As you exhale, we're coming straight back down into that ragdoll shape. Bend into the knees. Find the connection of the belly to the thighs. Drop the head down. Plant the hands. Grab hold of opposite elbows and just take that little rock. Plant the hands. Now we're going to walk the hands away from the feet. If you like me, you need an extra adjustment here because I moved. Come back into our downward facing dog. Dropping the knees down to the earth, uncurling the toes. And we find ourselves back in hero's pose. We're just going to interlace the hands palms together and turn the hands palms down towards the earth. Press them into the earth and open the heart towards the sky. So you get this little variation of camel. Inhale, come back to centre and roll it down into this extended child's pose. Inhale, roll through the back body, interlace the hands, palms together, turn the hands down onto the earth and open the heart. Exhale, bring the chin back to the chest, arms up overhead, see if you can reach the forehead to the floor before the hands. Two more breaths here in this extended child's pose. And from here we're going to come back into our Ashtanga Namaskar. So sliding forward over the hands, bending into the elbows, bringing the chin and the chest to the earth. Two more breaths here. You can see my puppy's having little puppy dreams there. Uncurl the toes, slide forward and come into baby cobra. Exhale and release the breath. Inhale, lift up baby cobra. Lift a little higher, squeeze into the back. Exhale and release. This time I want you to You can stay in Sphinx pose or you can take the hands further away. If you're a little bit more bendy in this shape, you can bring the hands a little closer, still just outside the shoulders and lift up from there. And as you warm up and come through some of these back bending shapes, 
uh, some of these deeper variations open up for you, which is a really lovely feeling. Exhale and release all the way down to the mat. Bring the feet together, reach around with the left hand, grab hold of the left foot and pull that heel into the butt. We're stretching through the quadricep in the front of the leg. Two more breaths here. Lovely deep inhale. Exhale. Feeling that beautiful compression of the belly into the earth. Take the arms out to the side and allow that left leg to come down and find a broken wing. A little bit of pressure applied with this uh, left hand to open up into the shoulder. Two more breaths here. Each exhale breath allowing you to surrender a little bit deeper so you're letting go in the shape. Rolling back through centre. Reach around with that right hand and grab hold of the right foot. Pressing the hip into the earth and feeling that beautiful extension through the front of the right leg in your quadricep. Two more breaths here. Taking the left hand out to the side. Right foot behind the left and opening for broken wind. One more breath. Rolling it back through the center. Bring both hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes, press up. Come into your child's pose. Keep the toes tucked here. Gentle gaze forward and make your way back up to downward facing dog. A little bit of movement. In this space feels good. And just holding, finding that lovely stillness in your downward facing dog. Gentle gaze forward, dropping the knees down to the earth and sitting back onto the heels. So we're going to come into a variation called dancing camel and I know that sounds a little bit intense but when we open our hearts and we focus on the movement, the fluid movement of this particular asana, it really does require your attention to breath and to the movement. So there's no room here for any, uh, any other thoughts really. So you can do this with the toes uncurled but if you're new to camel pose then you can do this with the heels elevated, so the toes tucked. So for the purpose of this, I am going to uncurl my toes. I'm going to slightly separate my knees and lift up. So our first test of dancing camel is to reach back with the left hand, and you're going to have the twist slightly to the left. You're going to reach that right arm up and over. And you come back to the center, Sink down into the hips, grab hold of that right heel with the right hand and lift up, sweep that hand over the top and reach back. And we try again on the other side, slowly finding fluidity in the movement. Left hand to the left ankle, lift the hips, reach and circle that right arm around. Exhale as you come back down. Left hand, right hand comes to the right foot. Left hand sweeps up and over as you inhale. Let's do two more. Left hand sweeps down. And as you inhale, the right hand sweeps up and over. Exhale. Sweep it around to the other side. Right hand, right heel as you inhale. Lift. and release. Bringing the knees together. Take an inhale breath here in hero's pose and as you exhale, come on down to child's pose. Child's pose is always the counterbalance for anything that we do in our camel throughout back bending. We're going to 
take three more breaths here. Rolling up through our back body. Planting the hands, coming up to downward facing dog. A little bit of movement here. And we're going to step forward to our Malasana squat. A little bit of shuffling, shuff, shuffling, shuffling around, opening of the hips, staring at that puppy that's just waking up. Bring the hands into the heart centre. Reach the hands forward and very slowly, or not so slowly, drop the hips down to the earth. So, we're going to come into uh, Vipali Dikarani. So I'm going to lift my butt up off the floor and place my hands underneath my butt here and lie back down. So the elbows are still out to the side, but having the hands underneath the hips just gives you a little bit of elevation and it also lets your bum massage your hands. Not your hands massaging your bum, because the palms of your hands are planted into the earth. <laughs> Lift the feet up towards the sky, and we're just gonna hang out here. So the feet aren't flexed or pointed, they're just kind of relaxed. The knees are bent, and you can stay here. So Vipariti Karani, or waterfall pose, is one of my all-time favorite asana. As you can see, it's an inversion. And because we're always going forward and doing things that are upright, this shape literally shifts your perspective. So if you're having a super duper stressful time or experiencing high levels of anxiety, get down low and stick your feet up in the air. Such a calming experience. And we've literally shifted our perspective. So we're staring up at the sky if you're outdoors or if you're indoors, maybe closing the eyes and imagining the night sky or the blue clouds and the infinite possibilities of the world beyond our little personal bubble. We're gonna take another three breaths here in this beautiful space. Of course, Vipariti Karani can be done with your legs up the wall for support. So just scoot your butt right up to the wall and swing the legs on up there. You can stay for as long as you like. You can also do it supported on a block or a bolster underneath the sacrum. Any of these versions are awesome. As you exhale, lower the heels, the feet down to the earth. I want you to think about bringing the feet or the heels closer to the butt. My hands are still planted here. We're going to take a little variation of bridge pose. So with your next inhale breath, activate the feet into the floor. Start to lift the hips and press back into the shoulders, feeling the elongation of the spine, the neck. Feel the blood rush back into your fingertips and reach the arms up towards the sky. Try and reach the fingertips as though you want to grab hold of the sun, the moon and the stars everything that you experienced out there in your Viparita Karani. Exhale and release the back body down towards the earth. Extend your right leg out to the right side and your left leg to the left. Here we are in Shavasana. Take a deep inhale breath. And as you exhale, sigh it out. So a really beautiful tool for anxiety is what I call the squeeze and release. So it's a pretty simple thing where we're going to go through and scan all the different parts of the body. So first off, we're going to squeeze up the feet and the toes. And as you exhale the breath, let that go. So as you inhale, squeeze and tighten up the legs and the hips, the hips and the butt cheeks. Exhale and let that all go. As you inhale, tighten up everything. Squeeze the shoulders, the tummy and the back. As you exhale, 
let that go. Squeeze the fists into a little ball. Squeeze the arms and the shoulders and the neck. Exhale and let go. Last one, squeeze the face and the head. And as you exhale, feel the whole body deeply surrender to the earth. That squeeze and release method where you inhale, hold on tight to everything, feeling the tension in your body. And then as you exhale, surrendering, letting go and releasing that tension to the earth. It's almost like you're expelling that final burst of stress or anxiety and just letting that shit go. Leaving way for you to peacefully rest in your Shavasana. My yogi friends, you are more than welcome to stay as little or as long as you like in your Shavasana. In fact, you can turn off this video right now and ignore the world for the next 10 minutes. going to take another few rounds of breath here, just enjoying our relaxed state. If and when, if ever, you are ready to come out of your Shavasana, Start to find some gentle movement in the fingers and toes. Reach and stretch the feet away from you. Hands up over the head. Fingers and toes as far away from each other as your body will allow. Gently walk the heels back up to the butt and roll over to your left. Press the hand into the earth and lift yourself back up into Sukhasana, easy seated pose. So quite often after practice is a really beautiful time to take even just five minutes in your meditation practice. So sitting on a bolster or a block or a special meditation cushion is a fantastic thing uh, to encourage you to stay longer in your meditation. So when you sit on the block, I'll turn side on for the purpose of this. Sit back onto the block. What we want is the hips up higher than the knees. And this is why our asana practice is so important, opening up into the hips and allowing us to sit a little longer in this space. Find a comfortable cross of the legs. Now, for me, that's a half or a, a semi-lotus pose, so bringing the feet right into the crutch or the groin. That allows me length in the back body. For some people, it might just be that you're in Sukhasana. Don't be afraid of using blocks, so chopping underneath the leg or using a bolster, just so that you can create that space and take any stress or tension out of any muscles in the body. So this support under here, if I'm not there, I can feel that there's a lot of stretching happening in my adductor on the inside of my thigh. The minute I return the block underneath the knee, it allows that part of the body a little bit of a reprieve and I settle into that. So I'm removing that tension from the body, uh, which can, in your meditation, decrease the time in your med meditation uh, and it can be a distraction. Uh, it can also create anxiety in your meditation because you think, shit, I'm not comfortable, I can't stay here. This is really frustrating. So we, what we want to do is remove as many of those obstacles as we can for you. One of the ways we move, remove those obstacles is with props. So again, coming back to the block, I'm seated on the block. Whatever is your comfortable space. And honestly, experiment with these. You'll see pictures of yogis and they're sitting in uh, lotus pose, which is uh, one leg crossed on top of the other, the other one up on here. Um, this is half lotus. Sometimes I meditate in this space. It took me a while to get back here to find comfortability in this space, but my most comfortable spot is this one and I can stay here for a long time um, seated in this space. And you can see I'm pretty upright. 
and what I've done is removed that pinching sensation by elevating the hips so I don't feel like I'm leaning forward into the space or too far back I feel an openness it's